We can't. We you know we can't talk shop too much. You know, talk shop, shop is a fine, little bit. But specifically about, I mean, about people that no one cares. Dave O'Neill was just shitting on you know Husey and fucking no, Will Anderson and saying he's, he's better. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, deserves he's angry. more. Oh, yeah. Husey was my support act in the nineties. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. um, there was a time, uh, as Anthony Morgan once said to me, the comic. There is always a time when the apprentice takes over from the master, ah. and that time is now. So <laughs> I always bring it up with him. I reckon worry. I must have about. A hundred apprentices then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 nothing wrong with an older apprentice either. You know, like... Yeah. You That's true. You become an apprentice in your 50s these days. Yeah. So, look, you should all be grateful you didn't start comedy in your 50s because there's nothing worse than going to raw comedy or an open mic night and there's a divorce guy with a guitar yeah. who's my age. Yeah. And then they always ask me for advice because I'm their age. I'm yeah. just like... But those are the bucket like saying, listers, you know? Those I know, are the, but yeah. that's all right. I don't mind a bucket lister. Yeah. That if they just they just want to do it once or twice. But someone who's like, one guy says to me, I'm just running out of time. I'm yeah. like, well, I don't yeah, know. What yeah, were you dude. doing in your 20s? I don't know. It's not yeah. my fault. Yeah, like, dude. <laughs> oh, I had a family. I was working. In, you know, I had a job. But in, take up a hobby like golf or something. Why do something that's so y- y- like a young destroying. man's game? Yeah, soul yeah. destroying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, join join the SES. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rotary, <laughs> Lions Club. I think that too. I think like also like we do stand up because we got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. We're like, well, dude, you've already got a house and shit. No, you've well, had I've got a career, all that, but you know, you know, you've already got. <laughs> Speak for you. I've got a beach house, mate. Speak yeah. for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. Got, I've got lots of things. But yeah, that's but you had I started for a while. Oh, when I started comedy, yeah, people always ask in uh, you know when you do regional ABC, how has comedy changed? And I say, comedy hasn't changed that much. The type of people getting the comedy has changed. Mm. Yeah. So when I started, it was all it was like the last, you know, no hopers. Mm. There was mm. heaps of. Everyone was on the dole. Yeah. Mm. Everyone was, there was a lot of alcoholics, drug addicts, um, lecherous people. Yeah. And virtually no one was from like a rich background. Yeah. If you were from a posh background, there were guys that got in the con, but they all did the university reviews. Oh, the lawyer show. Yeah, the ah, lawyer yes. show. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was always. That, uh, and you- and that, some of them would seep through into stand up, like Mick Malloy, for example. Yeah. But most. Most of those guys would stick to the uni reviews and get media jobs, and then stand up comedy was just like, oh, yeah. And then once people like Rove and all that started, and there was a career path, yeah, I think people started to say to their dad, Well, I'm I was thinking of being a lawyer father, but I'm going to become a stand-up comedian. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Man. wonderful, son. I don't know. I, I still had to come out of the closet as a stand-up comedian yeah, to my lawyer. father. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. When I quit being a lawyer to, for stand-up full time, I still that felt like a big, you know. Well, there's a whole there's a whole raft of uh, brown comedians: Durek, Naz, Serene. Uh, there's more of them that are all accountants. Yeah. yeah which yeah. is hilarious. So they've <laughs> yeah, obviously so done funny. the accountancy to. Keep mum and dad happy. happy. Yeah. And at one point, they've just gone, oh, I'm going to be a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> but most of my generation, there were a lot of teachers. Yeah. So oh, I yeah. always maintain that yeah. if you were slightly creative and from a blue collar family, mm. that's where you were pushed into. Yeah. So dad would say initially, you got to get a trade because that's what he did. You'll be a tradesman. Yeah. Oh, I'm no good with my hand. He said, "You." He said to me, "You should be a builder. Your twin brother should be an electrician." Yeah. Imagine if we were building houses now. That would be. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a fire and a flood. Yeah. Oh, and and look at my, what happened to my twin brother. He didn't do it. He went to uni, and he's like a he's a high flyer in the. He was in the Red Cross, International yeah. Red Cross. Yeah. So, but anyway, so you would be a, okay. So you're not gonna be a tradesman, all right? Okay, because my dad would take me to job interviews and sit in the job interview for trades in year ten and year eleven. Right, because mm, mm. he and so I went for a job as a linesman, mm. which is up on the power lines. And the guy asked me first question: Imagine dad sitting in the room with you. Are you scared of heights, David? And I go, uh, yes. <laughs> Dad's, you hear dad go like this. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Just groan behind me. And so and so anyway. So okay, you're not going to be a tradesman. He's, mum said, you know, they're not going to be. So teaching, that's the th- you're creative, be a teacher. So yeah, because yeah. ah, there were none yes. of those uh, when I when I went to union the lo- very early eighties. There was no creative writing courses or anything like mm. that. You know, no, I mean, there was none of mm. that. Those were for pufters. Well, <laughs> <laughs> for the more flamboyant. <laughs> well, there were pufters. Uh, there were. <laughs> I when I went to high school, there were gay guys. But I remember when I first met my wife. 
uh, 35 years ago and I was living in a shared house like in Collingwood. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you're friends, aren't I? You know when you... And often it needs a good woman to play that your friends are fuckheads. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, Ivan, like, uh, Ivan Milan, he's a great guy. What's wrong with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, he yeah, works yeah. on the roads and you yeah. know, keeps you know, to himself. <laughs> keeps to his. And yeah. she goes, oh, really, Are you friends? I, I really like your gay friend. And I go, I don't have a gay friend. She goes, Yeah. <laughs> I go, Which one? She goes, Yeah, him. I go, Oh, him. He's not gay. She goes, Oh, okay. So he's an apprentice hairdresser. Um, <laughs> he's a good dancer. Loves he's drama. never had a girlfriend. Yeah. I'm like, you're right. I think you're <laughs> yay. Um, anyway, yeah. this is all. Why are we talking about this? I don't know. Uh, we went off on a tangent. Just, Stand uh, up. Is it a viable up. career? I remember you know. always going to the law reviews and it was just always faulty towers. Yes. It was always just like, and even if they wrote their own sketches, yeah. it just seemed to have, you know, Monty Python esque, like, oh, hello. Oh, I'm yeah, in a yeah. weird situation. Oh, hello, person in the weird situation. I went I'm to the, reacting to this. I went to the mall. I love them. Yeah, I, I would, yeah. I, and I went out with a girl from, I was I was starstruck by her. Yeah. So, so I went out with a girl from one of those reviews, but I wanted to be in them, but I never auditioned for them. Yeah. 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 yeah anyway, well, yeah. there's a guy running lawyers do stand up shows during festival this year. And he I, asked me to do it. And it I said, it, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I haven't been for whatever, four. 14 years but still i was like lawyers doing stand who cares like no one's gonna go to this packed every night lawyers yeah, yeah. like 6 p.m shows filled with lawyers whatever. yeah lawyers yeah which is not the ideal crowd oh, were they yeah. all right or eh, it was yeah it was pretty good i did a gear on friday in manly manly union club rugby union yeah so oh, rugby, right. you, you'd know about this kappa mm. rugby union is a bit posher than league yeah uh-huh. it's very private school yeah right they play union in the big private schools. And so all these guys, they're all lawyers. Yeah. The guy, the president gets up, he's a lawyer. I go yeah. to the guy down the front, what, oh, you're a lawyer. They, yeah. they, were, they were all lawyers. And so what I always do with those crowds, I always go, I'm not intimidated. I went to university. Yeah. Well, and then I get them to guess what degree I've got. Yeah. Of course, yeah. it's an arts degree. And then I say, how long was law? They're like, four, five years ago. Mine was eight. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's a good bit, man. Oh, yeah. it's a classic. It's an O'Neill classic. Yeah. Um, Bits like that work so good because oh. you're like, um, it's like, Oh, I'm better. I'm confident. I'm actually not I'm, better. Yeah, I'm an yeah, underdog. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, an I, underdog to you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, now yeah. my son's doing arts at uni, so there's oh, a whole right. cycle. I remember. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about your your private life, Dave. Yeah. But I remember you telling me talk you about. got you got your son a, a a job at a bottle shop. Yes. <laughs> Yes, which he quit and didn't tell yeah, his quit. mother or me. Yeah, so he. So was he still acting like he had shifts to go? No, to? no, no, no. Okay. He just stopped going, and we're like, "What's happened to the?" No, it's the Grand View where I do comedy. Oh, we yeah, yeah, both yeah. performed it in Fairfield in Melbourne, mm. and my son would not get a job, so he was at uni. Yeah, he was at uni, yeah. and I'm like, "You got to get a job, mate." You know, yeah. like I had jobs in year seven, like, and so I got him a job at the bowl shop, but the bowl shop is not. And you know what was good? It put him off alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Because right. there's guys that live at that pub, yeah. and there was one guy that would come down, and they're not. If you're living above a pub, you're not having the best life. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> there was one guy who would come down and pull up a stool and talk to him for an hour and a half. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> a fucking I mean, bottle so shop <laughs> barfly. <laughs> yes. And my son hid the stool, and so he still goes. Like this guy still goes. Yeah, your son. He hid the stool from me. He hid the stool, and so he worked at the bottle shop. Oh, no wonder he left then. Oh man, because what happens in a bottle shop is that you're outdoors, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's cold. But also, you get a bit of aggro from yeah. bogans. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought got, you'd be their, their, their king. No. Nah. I thought you'd be like, I'm the provider. The dealer. M- yeah. Most times, you know when alcohol's involved, we all work in pubs. Yeah, yeah. One time, a, a, a young bogan came in and, and it, it, I, I said, well, what's, was he, did he have a ute? And he goes, no, he wasn't even like a proper tradie. He had like a Corolla. And they'd run out of some kind of beer. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the guy, the bogan goes to him. What sort of bottle shop is this? You, you know, yeah. And he go and 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 my son goes, oh, it's it's called the Thirsty Camel. And you're like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> but the, what the, the camel's got no? What did the bogan say? The camel's got no liquid in it, no water in it. <laughs> and my son, it's humps are dry. Well, my yeah, the humps are dry. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Some, he was trying to be a smartass, yeah. and my son, being another smartass, goes, well, actually, 
the camel's hump is not filled with liquid. It's actually fat. <laughs> the guy like lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you having a go? You having a fucking go, mate? And he's like, no, I'm having a go. Yeah, he thought the humps were filled with BB. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so there's no emu export in the fucking humps. Yeah, but yeah. no, no, he's still he's got, then I got him a job at the supermarket and but he told me that he was told off as sweeping the floor with one hand. How old is he? He's 21. Okay. I All said, right. mate, you got to sleep, sweep the floor with two hands. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, when I worked in a supermarket, they used to call me Lightning. That was my nickname because I was so slow yeah. on broom. Yeah. Lightning and Flash because... Yeah. I, because I you see, would flash people in the, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the storeroom. <laughs> oh boy, he's slow, um, but man, he can uh, pull that pull those pants down. But if you're working <laughs> in a job, you got to at least try. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I was like uh, when I worked on building sites and things, I was I work really hard, but I didn't understand when they go, oh look, go and sweep or go and clean. That means get out of my sight. Oh, does like, it look busy? Yeah, but but, but look busy. Mm. Yeah, right. and I just couldn't lie to people. Sometimes I got sacked from a building site. They're like, "Dude, you're just standing around." And I'm like, "Well, there's nothing to do." Yeah, <laughs> I'm right. not gonna. I'm not gonna fucking. You know what I mean? It yeah. really pissed. One guy said, "You don't look busy enough," and I'm like, "Well, make me look busy. Yeah. I don't mind working." Yeah. You know, you're just like, "What is this weird thing?" It's it's weird to me that you can work on a. A fo- you can look at a $5 million house, right? You yeah. look at a $5 million house. You're like, that is amazing. And you think that like a bunch of guys in like white suits with white gloves put it together. <laughs> but really, no. who put it together? Yeah, the roughest <laughs> the absolute dudes. roughest guys yeah. going, look busy, mate. Yeah, yeah, look yeah. fucking busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're saying slurs all day. Yeah. and Yeah, just the worst <laughs> scum on her. But then, was that pre-phones when you were working on the thing? So, like, if you're standing around looking at your phone. Yeah, it was pre-phone. Right. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. just standing, like, you're just looking at a wall. Like it's I was just, like, the end of walking the walking around, you know what I mean? He's like, walk around <laughs> faster. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. To be fair, if I work with you and I saw you just... Just walking around in circles, I'd be like, "Someone fire this kind." Yeah, dude. I know, <laughs> man. Yeah, it was. So you know, white collar job is a little bit easier. My sister in law used to get a clipboard and walk around with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you look like you're doing a clipboard. Oh yeah. yeah. I think on a building site you need a shovel. Yeah, a broom. What yeah, I always just carry. I, I learned you just carry a broom around. You just Something. got to carry a broom around. <laughs> it's yeah. so dumb. It's so dumb. You think they'd have enough work for you to go? Yeah. Hey, or hey, let's chill. Yeah. Let's have a coffee. You know? I suppose a ladder would work as well. Oh, yeah, a ladder. ladder works. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. No one will bug you with a ladder. No one's going to bug me with a yeah. ladder. Yeah. I, I mean, I worked in a few blue collar jobs, but it was. My dad did a lot of that, but oh, it's just hard work. And I was Sometimes I get. I was telling a bunch of blokes on the weekend, I sometimes I get a bit jealous because, you know, we have these crazy work schedules where you don't really know where you, when you're going to work or what you're going to be doing. But and you're I, Canadian. I lo- yeah. yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. But sometimes I look at a bloke sitting yeah. at a pub. And yeah, they work just, eight to four every day. And yeah. he's just had not heaps of beers. He probably has three or four. Yeah. Goes home, has a palmer or whatever, and I'm like, that looks like a pretty fucking good life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, some you people work are happy. Guts out. When I, so when I left school, we were waiting for our results, mm. and we all got a job at a tile factory that made roof tiles. And so it was the most horrific job. And so Robert Popovic, his real name, he's a doctor now, he went into the foreman and he, and he, and he talks to him in Serbian because they're Serbs, right? Yeah. He comes out and he goes, oh, because I'm Serbian, I've, we've got, I've got us the good job. Like, what's the good job? He goes, we've got to go down into the, the tunnel between the kiln and the furnace and clean out the tunnel or the black tar with a jackhammer. Like, I go, what's the bad job? <laughs> That's the worst job. <laughs> and so we worked in this tile factory over summer yeah. with other guys from my high school. And then we got our results. And I went to teacher's college. He went to medical school. Another guy, Jeffrey, failed. And we said, so what are you going to do? He goes, I'm just staying in the factory. He's probably still there. The oh, yeah, of course. Still there. That's all he knows. But it was just brutal work. Well, yeah, yeah, on his days off, he pulls the, up a stool to the bottle shop yes. and just fucking sits around <laughs> doing oh, the, the dream. The, the best thing was they had one of those trucks that would turn up at about 11 o'clock and ring a bell, and you'd all run out and they'd sell sausage rolls and sandwiches and cakes. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that, that, that was the best truck. Yeah. Oh, oh, man, it was so so good. Anyways, welcome back to the Work Hates podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm Bron Lewis. Yeah. Uh, oh, is- yes, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> talk about that. I've talked about that stuff with them. I mean. uh, have you? They are the I heroes. 
they are the heroes, the people who just rock up to factories every day. They're the real heroes. Doing, yeah, they are the real heroes. It always made me laugh when a cricketer would win Father of the Year. Yeah. And he spends eight months in a hotel in India. Yeah. Or yeah, five, yeah. you know, in a four star. Oh, he's the father of the year. Is he? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? He's a deadbeat dad, but yeah. still providing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. His wife's stuck at home with three <laughs> kids or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Dave, thanks so much for doing the pod. Yes. A lot of um, when we record here in the studio is watching our guests try to get comfortable on the big chair. Well, we're getting filmed, though. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. I even do yeah. my hair. Look, my hair's crazy. Your no, hair's looking good. good. No, it's not Yeah, it's looking good. good. I think it looks good. You came in and I thought I thought you might have been cranky. You, you just walked in, you're like, oh. But have well, like, no. you been getting the kids ready for school or yes, something like that? Yes, yeah, took ah. the kids to school. Well, I actually dropped them off at the bus stop and I went and did Mick Malloy show. He does a Triple M in Sydney. So oh, I, mean, right. I do a spot on there occasionally. Yep. Mick and MG. Yeah. Right. And that's Are that's you doing fun. like the Hollywood Minute over there? The, no. show, the showbiz corner? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. No, I just do, you know, just talk about comedy and stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. Get, you know, story. They want, they, want, they want to fill some time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. do stuff. Th- yeah. Those kind of radio spots are good for like trying out stand-up. It's always found that. You, just you, go, you kind of, I mean, a lot of people do this, man, but you should do, because like every time I see you, like, and it used to be probably weekly, yes. you used to have three at least three stories in that week that had happened to you. Yeah, yeah. Like you had a cement... You you have a... Like, I could listen to them all day. Well, the thing you is, know, I've, you, I've got off Twitter because, um, as Mike has pointed out to me privately... I was fighting with people on Twitter. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I love watching them. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just a waste of time. And so yeah. I, I got off it last year because my teenage daughter would dob on me to my wife and say, <laughs> Dad's fighting with the anti-vaxxers again. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. And so anyway, I had my son's The Bottle Shop one's 21st the other day, which is just in a Mexican restaurant. That's what I wanted to do. And my brother-in-law, Timmy, walks in. He's an Irish guy. He's like, and because I got back on Twitter during the festivals to promote my show, but I can't help myself. I get dragged into fights with idiots. <laughs> yeah. And I just waste my time. I end up researching stuff like, oh, no, that's not right about the vaccine. And I'm on there. I'm Googling. St- I've got like mission control. I've got screens. And then I'm t- typing responses back. And then this, my brother, brother-in-law walks in. And he goes, he announces to the whole crowd, Dave, you've got to stop fighting with the Muppets on Twitter. You've got to stop it. I'm like, shut up, <laughs> Timmy. So I've stopped. Um, and Have what you? I've, Yes. Uh, I, I delete it from my phone. Okay. Uh, okay great. That's the big one. Yeah. So yeah. I de- if you delete it from your phone, because I travel a bit, yeah, yeah. I just don't have it with me. I feel like yeah. as soon as you reply, you've already kind of lost. Even if you've got the high ground, whatever. It's so true. Yeah, and so what I've been doing, I've been actually just sitting on my bed or whatever, my office, as the kids call it, my bed, and just trying to write jokes and. Yeah, look back over your stories of the week. And yeah, 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 so you yeah, go on yeah, radio, yeah. and so you do the story, but you're not going to bomb on radio. Do you know what I mean? Like you can yeah. no, but you can have a, you can have bad spots and good spots though on radio. Yeah. It's interesting because they're a good audience, but you still got to yeah. deliver kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So you get an idea of what's working, what's not working. You know, man. Um, um, there's uh, times I'll, I'll say uh, some every now and then you have a, a a hard gig in a regional place, and I'm yes. just like, just Dave O'Neill it. Mate. Just hit him with 200%. I had to MC just, this gig in Tof, Coffs Harbour, mm. 17 people. And it just, you know when they're just no c- cohesive? They're yeah. just all But also scattered. they look around at the crowd like this yeah. and go, this is a bit shit. Yeah. And it all seeps into them, I reckon. Yeah. What you got to do, in my advice, and this is the same with corporate gigs, pretend you're having the best time ever. Man. And if there's like yelling and stuff and they're yelling at it, I just go, you guys are crazy here at the petrol station footy tipping competition comedy night, yeah. which I did one night. I did a I did a gig in Kitan. No, where was it? Heath, somewhere where there was a, a, a rough crowd, Heath yeah. maybe. And they were all... They only they didn't know each other, but they were all members of the petrol station footy tipping competition. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah, and they had a comedy night. Too. <laughs> petrol station <laughs> footy. <laughs> oh, that's oh great. man, I just said and how just great. Got, the yeah, trade. you just got to You just got to. Um, and also the other big thing, which I said to my daughter today, who has to give like a talk or something for a test in year twelve. This is what I said, and I'd forgotten it, but I said obviously said it, I said it on a TV show because Broden. From Artie Donna quoted it back to me. He goes, because he used to go to schools and do motivational talks. Did he? Ah. Broden did. Right. Yeah. And Sammy J used to do them too. Oh, you bloody, you've got to get bloody motivated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what, kid, he's got that voice, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 voice. Yeah. But that, that would be yeah. the worst job. Yeah. I would rather work in a factory oh. than go and talk to year 11 kids to motivate them. 
And he always said, I sit on some show, just think in the back of your head, in half an hour, I'll be driving away in my car, eating a bag of chips, and I will never see these people ever again. That's yes. why you got to think at a bad gig. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. will just walk out of here. But you never call out how shit... I'm a big proponent of telling them how shit they are and how fucked the situation is, dude. Like, uh, I don't know. I, that's, sometimes. I don't think I could yeah. fake enthusiasm the way you guys could. Like, I can't yeah. act like I'm having a good time. I feel like it cuts through. Like, sometimes either there's other acts that are bombing and then you just call out that this I think that's fair enough. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But it does make it worse sometimes where they're yes. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I try not to do it. It's like a, a barrier, you know, if, if you do it straight away. Oh, you yeah. kind of got to work at him for a while. Then you yeah. go, okay. But man, it is brutal. Yeah, it, I, it's crazy when I was doing it. In I had two kind of. There was one that we, when you win them over, it's, I reckon that's way better yeah. than if the crowd's hot. Yeah, yeah. When you win them over and you're like, we did, we did this in Bellingen. Like they start out quite ordinary. Where were you in Bellingen? I've uh, done Bellingen. At the community hall or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been on that's the a wild. Nice, that's a nice spot, Belgian. It's so nice, yeah. man. It's absolutely beautiful. Is it coastal? Yeah, uh, no, no. It's kind of up from Coffs Harbour yeah. in the mountains, uh, and there's like a Steiner. It's a bit hippie. There's a Steiner school there yeah. or something, and the, and that's where um, that famous cricket is from because there's a there's a statue of him in the park there. Oh, really? Gilly, Gilchrist. Oh, Gilchrist. Gilchrist, and the statue's kind of at groin height. Oh yeah. yeah, and I said, so you blokes get drunk and pretend he's given you a, um, you know, <laughs> a it's like a no, it's like okay. a bust. Oh uh, right, 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 like an amputee. <laughs> I did the pub there. Yeah. I did the diggers rest pub. I think it's called. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And I said I to the guy next door. Yeah, I said to the guy, "What do you do for a job?" He goes, "I work at Centrelink." I said, "Do me a favor, turn around and see if any of your clients are here." Then he turned around and went. Oh, it's quite a few actually. <laughs> <laughs> the Belgian say, so "Was that hard?" Or it started out hard. And then it was, then it got good. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, I was just working at him. Who just were you there working with? Them. I was there with Brett, yeah. So we're ha- he, he, he headlined, and then um, there was a couple of other acts there. And, yeah, got him on side, great. How many that, people? I, I've never been so happy. Mm. It was people? like 30 or 40, oh, something right. like that. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. But then we did Coffs Harbour, and I've got to say, guys, well, we went to Coffs Harbour together last year, man. Yeah. Got to say, Coffs Harbour, weirdest place on earth. It well, is so weird. I'm going to Coffs Harbour soon, and I've done Coffs Harbour before. Yeah. And I've got a theory about Coffs Harbour as opposed to places like Bellingen really appreciate you turning up because yeah, no yeah, one goes yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Every comic goes to Coffs Harbour. So you'll be walking down the street, there'll be a massive sign, Carl Barron, Kitty Flanagan, Akmal, and yeah. then you're there. So you're competing with... Yeah, they yeah, get everyone. Yeah. They get Jimmy Barnes. They get... Yeah, Co- yeah, yeah. Everyone tours. Missy Higgins, everyone goes through Coffs Harbour, mm. but no one goes to Bellingen. Yeah. So Bellingen should have been a lot better. Is my yeah, theory. yeah, it was. It was. And then we went we, like, we went to this place called Glenray, which was about 30, oh. 40 k's out of uh, uh, out of Coffs Harbour. And was that good? Oh, so awesome. Yeah. Is there joints- a community there? They all know each other. Yeah, they're yeah. the best. And there was, a, there was a point where they were all like riffing with each other and I was just standing on stage. <laughs> I was like, guys, keep going. I didn't use – I probably used two bits of material. I I used one bit of material and then they – the, the, the guy said the punchline back to me and then it got an even bigger laugh. <laughs> See, I love <laughs> like, those kids. I love those small towns. It was so good, man. The it's so best. good. Yeah. The best. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we better get into it, Michael. We better get into it. Let's uh, go. Preamble. That's all preamble. We do a little preamble. Yeah. We're mainly preamble these days. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. mainly preamble. It's amble. The whole it's just one big amble. Bro. We're ambling. We're ambling. I know I listened to the last episode. There's a lot of preamble. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This yeah. is it. This is where quitting after this right yeah yeah this is yeah. the final app mike's gonna have a kid he said yeah after yeah. he gets married yeah not with my wife but <laughs> yeah. of course why would you do that <laughs> yeah gross are you gonna do an arnold schwarzenegger oh yeah, yeah the, nanny. The, the, the nanny the nanny phil collins yeah break up with her via fax like phil collins oh is that what, oh, he, is did? That what he did I think he did yeah <laughs> well, that's wife. amazing and you know who his daughter is yeah. emily in paris that's phil collins daughter right anyway there wow, you go. not an easy lover <laughs> <laughs> I hate Phil Collins. I'm trying to think of a Phil Collins song. There was something in the air that night. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Something in the air. That was, was the, the genesis of Emily and Perry. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. 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 Ah, uh, ring a ding ding! You got the kings. Welcome to another episode of the Phone Hacks Podcast with me, Mike Goldstein, and the Mick Mars to my Tommy Lee, Nick Capper. Ah, uh, yes, yes, that is pretty good. Is that yeah. a reference to yeah. that's Tommy Lee's in it? Yeah, I thought you would be across that. that but that's Mar- kind of Motley Crue, eighties 
Motley Crue. Yeah, I'm more New Wave, mate. Uh, but I, I know Motley, I know Tommy Lee. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't know Nick. Mullen. Mick Mars was the bassist. There's the oh, guitarist. He's a bassist. That had guitarist. Like, he yeah. was all arthritic from he like was, a young age, right? He's like a yeah. See, I know the bassist in Guns N' Roses was it Duff. Was the bassist in Guns N' Roses? Yeah, yeah but yeah. I'm not. That, those bands were not my thing. Really? No, no. not at all. You weren't no. rocking girls, girls, girls with the top down in your. Uh, Fucking convertible. <laughs> girls, girls. Oh, no. Women, women, women. We, we, we were more, you know, Duran Duran, Spanner Ballet, oh, uh, yeah, Madness, great. the Specials. Yeah, Flock great. of Seagulls. Nah, they had one hit. Nah. <laughs> nah. You got to draw the line. You got to draw the line. <clears throat> Sorry, Kaja Gugu and bands like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was what we referred to as girls music. Flock but, of yeah. Seagulls still spawned a haircut, though. But like, we, we were big, yeah, we were big... Um, you know, Oz Rock too. You yes. know, the Oils and yep. you know the Sunny Boys, the Models. Church. I don't know any of that. You know any of these bands, but yeah. the, it was interesting because this would be something in America. You go and see a band like you know Min- you know Midnight Oil though, or of ACDC. Yeah. You go and see a band like that. No girls, right? Eighty yeah. percent angels were the same. Yeah. You go and see a band like In Excess, girls. Yeah. 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 The Church girls. Yeah. Oh, really? Anyone that had a good girls looking like lead singer? Yeah, girls love the church. Oh, oh absolutely. Because right. uh, I've just been reading this uh, book about punk bands selling out, and uh, girls loved Green Day. Yeah, that's and interesting. Girls love Green Day and Blink One Eighty Two. Well, me and they didn't you. like any of the other punk bands. Well, Green Day and Blink are cute. Yeah, yeah. Cute. yeah. yeah. The last yeah. band me and Cab went saw Devo, mm. one of the greatest bands of all time. Yes, not many girls there. There wasn't many girls. <laughs> Who would have thought? There was not many girls at Devo. I don't think there would have been girls at Devo in the no, 80s. There weren't. No, yeah. I went to Devo in the 80s. There weren't any girls in 1982 <laughs> oh, either. Yeah. They're all boys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I'm going to a... Uh, we go to the movie. Um, we go to the yeah. Devo movie together. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. You want to come, Mike? Sure. It's a Devo movie. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with Devo, but is this a movie about them or yeah, they made a, a movie? Okay, right, right. Now, you don't really want to go. No. You, you only want to go if you're a fan. Right. Yeah. But, I read... Uh, I've been listening to audiobooks about 10 autobiographies of different musicians. All Devo every time. I mentioned always Devo. Always an influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah always an, even Mark Lanigan from The Screaming Trees. Oh. Really? Yeah, he got to play with Devo and he said when they stood side, stood, stood side stage and watched him, he could not believe it. He wow. was, yeah. well, a huge influence on Weird Al because he yeah. Yeah. wrote a Devo-ass song that like out Devo's Devo. Yeah. Weird what Al, was that? I met him. You Dare know. to be stupid. Oh, really? I got to I got to listen. I did speaks and specs with Weird Al. And then, oh, did you? And then I did radio with him, yeah. and he was he's not a lot of fun. Really? No, really? You, I you, hate to hear that. You think he's going to be great, but he's kind of like an he's a nerd basically. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. Okay. And then we were trying to get him. Kate Lambrook, who I did radio with, was trying to get him to muck around and she was trying to suggest songs to him he's like nah really nah. I guess Boring Al doesn't have the same yeah. ring to it <laughs> Nerdy <laughs> Al Boring Al, <laughs> boring Al. Yeah. yeah but you know he, you know, the funniest thing about him is that he has to ring the artist and ask permission yeah. so he Michael Jackson loved him and gave him permission yeah but who said no to him do you know who said no Radiohead? to him Radiohead and Prince and Prince yeah. oh yeah. yeah Prince is a serious guy yeah he said no apparently he uh, he, he really ripped into Sinead O'Connor after she did nothing compared. Oh, really? He around the house and he's like, what the fuck were you doing? That was terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would Weird Fully. Al's Prince cover have been? Like, what would he change his shit to food? Uh, There's already yeah. um, strawberry Raspberry. Beret. Raspberry, raspberry beret. beret. Yeah, yeah. But like... Kiss? Would have been Kiss, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. Piss. What would you change that to? I just want your piss. Piss. Fish. Fish. Yeah, dirty weird no, 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 no. <laughs> Fish. Fish. <laughs> don't have to fist. <laughs> when doves don't cry. Have, to have when... a rod or a net. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fish. Or a boat. That's what it would have been. It would have been. Yeah. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. We don't have to be beautiful <laughs> yeah. to sit on yeah. the end of the pier. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be educated just to have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> you just need a rod and a bait oh. and a boat. You can a line fish. to catch a <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could probably do it now. I mean, Prince is dead. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know yeah. if the. I don't wonder if the. Um, you have to go through the estate. Yeah, but often the estate are they just well, they just want money. You know? True. Oh, right. Look what happened to the Beatles and you know songs. And That's stuff. all what public domain now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could yeah. just wait it out. Yeah. Apparently, he rang um, Kurt Cobain and he's like, "Yeah, can I do?" smells like teen spirit and he's like yeah what's it about and he's like it's about how no one can h- hear what you're saying and he yeah. goes that sounds great <laughs> to yeah hang up the phone. yeah well Kurt <laughs> Cobain <laughs> had a sense of humor apparently yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah it's so funny yeah the lyric from that it's hard to bargle Nardle's house with all these marbles in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the Widow movie Classic. was good too. Did you watch that? No, Man, the, watch the, it's so funny. It's so funny. It's like then, an old-fashioned comedy in a way. And mm-hmm. apparently it wasn't as big here, but UHF, his movie from the late 80s, was like a defining movie of my childhood. Just so yeah. funny. Parodies everything. Mm. Rambo, Conan the... UHF? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying that. But they call it here, it's called like the Vidiot from UHF. They change yeah. it. So, uh, but it's like, man, we, it holds up. We got some of those... I mean, I remember seeing the Blues Brothers at the cinema. Yeah. yeah. And I remember seeing... We also got the Kentucky Fried movie. Remember the Kentucky oh, yeah. Fried movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is like a series of sketches. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Big. There's this new one I want to see called A Hundred Beavers. Oh, that's about to be great, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really know where to find it. it. It's yeah, got it's, a cinema release. It's it? some fucking oddball comedy movie that's like, it's like got a cult following already and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's blowing up. But no well, the weird only was it. just a straight up funny movie. Yeah. 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 And I loved all the references. There was Devo references in there. They had a guy in a Devo hat at the pool. Oh, the, the pool party's the got pool everyone. Party's, uh, it's got like, um, you know, the guy that smashes the Gallagher. Gallagher's yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, yeah. the Queen guitarist. Oh yeah, well, he yeah, has to yeah. announce yes. who he is because everyone's like, "The fuck are you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian May. Yeah, Brian May. Brian May. <laughs> yeah, no, that movie's great, and it's kind of like because there was the Dewey Cox Walk Hard movie. It's oh, got that, that tone, great. the fake. Oh, I've never seen that. Is man, that good? That's so good. It's John C. Really Riley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's funny. Yeah. Oh man, I mean, you know, there's still funny comedies. Step Brothers was funny. Yeah, it's so good. Will man. Ferrell and John C. Riley. That was the last of them, though, I'd say. Yeah, John C. Riley's funny. John C. Riley's crazy. Well, because what was the last comedy movie you saw in theaters? That's the thing. That's why they they used to blow up on DVDs, but now there's not that's that. That's a really good question. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you could think, not action comedy, but just yeah, a straight-up yeah. comedy in theater is so rare. Yeah. So, I go to stuff with my kids. So, we went and saw... What's it called? No, that's that was that, that was a movie about the end, of the end of the world. <laughs> now my one of my sons went and saw Minions. Yeah, but no, we went and saw that one about the um, oh, the Quiet Place, the new Quiet Place oh, one. Yeah, yeah. So that's a uh, horror kind of thing. yeah. Yeah, it's not comedy. That's not comedy. What did I see <laughs> I mean, before that? You're, you're laughing Are your you just, ass off during Quiet just, Place. <laughs> the world's ending. This is great. That's a really good question. What comedy are you going to see? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, it used to be such a great thing. Like, I, I yeah. remember seeing There's Something About Mary, obviously, whenever, 96 or yeah. whatever. Oh, I saw Wayne's World the cinema. Yeah. People falling out of their chairs. I saw The Castle. Like, we had some good Australian ones. I saw uh, The Castle in the, the cinema. People insane. were pissing themselves. But now it's got to be an action comedy where it's some, like, hunk, like, cracks wise every now and again. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. Cool. Probably Bridesmaids was the last one, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a good that's point. Probably the last one. Yeah. I've got to rewatch that. i got to rewatch it. That was funny. Because yeah. I've been on a, a, a uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Maya Rudolph. She's hilarious. They've been putting up, uh, on TikTok, they've been putting up just SNL sketches. Yeah. And her ones are like off the off the hook. Oh, oh man. So funny. The fact her and uh, Kristen Wiig were yeah. on that same cast. It's like it's, two of the funniest women of all time. When they're doing the, like the Swedish game show or something, oh, yeah. and they're driving the car oh. around, it's great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Rose Byrne was very funny in Bridesmaids. Oh yeah, yeah. So I did. Good, I did yeah. a movie with her. Whatever. Oh, oh, oh really? Uh, Takeaway. Yeah, that I wrote with Marco. Oh, Tull, that's right. I haven't she, seen Takeaway. Yeah. Oh, mate, it's one of the greats. And there's people like like a lot of people. <laughs> You know, just like, <laughs> Do you think she's somewhere sitting around going, I did a movie with Dave O'Neill? <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's well, crazy. Your, uh, well, how funny is this? Right, so Takeaway, we did it 20 years ago, and it's about yeah. two fish and chip shops that compete against each other, and then a Burgies, which is like a Macca's opens down the road, right? Yeah, and yeah. they have to, you know, so it was Vince Colosmo in one, Stephen Curry in the other. I played the butcher who had the shop in between, yeah. and Rose Byrne worked with Vince Colosmo. It was like Vince's niece or something like that. And anyway... W- Roseburn was already blowing up. She was in two hands, and she and and yeah. and the the director said, "Who would you like to give this part?" And I said, "Was it what about Roseburn?" And then she said, "Yes." We're like, Fuck. She said yes. <laughs> and so anyway, you know, you, whatever. She's a really nice person, and um, she was really young, there, really young then, yeah, she was yeah. twenty or something. But anyway, I had to. Um, we filmed in a real set of shops in Alfington, and the butcher was a real butcher's. And when the butcher retired, he's someone got in contact and said, "Can you come and?" Give a talk at his at his retirement at the Lawn Bowls Club because right. they're going to show oh, Takeaway yeah. at the end of the night or something. I don't know. That was his claim to fame. His shop was in t- this movie. That's that, his legacy. Oh, that man. didn't do any well at all. <laughs> and he goes, um, hey, "Yeah, good to see. You. He's Italian. Good to see. You. Um, hey, Rose dropped by the other day. I'm like, what? And he goes, "Yeah, yeah. Rose Byrne came in with her, her new husband, um, uh, the big guy, Bobby." 
Rose Byrne and Bobby Carnival. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Carnival. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, um, she'd been telling him about this movie. Yeah. And so he wanted to go see it was filmed when they were in Melbourne. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Carnival. Far <laughs> out. That's so funny, man. man it's so Walking f- around Elfington. Yeah. <laughs> so this is where you shot Takeaway Rose? Yeah. That's uh, it. I mean, he's a legend, that guy. Oh, yeah. He rules. Oh, man. Man, it's so great. Uh, you get two different reactions when I say I know Dave O'Neill. They go, they go who's that? Like, I, oh, I just yeah. did a gig with Dave O'Neill. They're like, who's that? And I'm like, oh, he's the big guy from Spicks and Specs. They're like, oh, yeah, him. Yeah, Alan Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, not, they're not Alan Bro, the other guy. And they're like, oh, yeah, he's oh, fine. Yeah, him. Yeah. Or they'll go like, Dave O'Neill. <laughs> You did takeaway. <laughs> oh, really? oh no, the nugget. It's the, the, the nugget, nugget. The nugget and the takeaway. It's yeah. just like must have been sem. I never saw either of them. I should have. They, seen were, them, they were big in the. The nugget was big in the country because it was yeah, about yeah. country people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Huge. It was twenty years ago now though. Yeah, like, yeah. So we got a, a takeaway sequel in the works or a no. nugget two electric. The nugget Boogaloo. two. The nugget did all right. Yeah. It had Eric Banner in it, Stephen Curry. Yeah, and. It could easily, you could. I mean, obviously Eric's doing whatever, but you know, doing Hollywood stuff. But yeah, it could. Yeah, Vince. Uh, Vince is uh, seeing three women now and lives with his mum. I read on it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. you read that? <laughs> it's like Daily Mail. It's like really? Vince Colosimo yeah. currently seeing three women and living with his mum. Hell yeah! <laughs> I was boy. like, hell yeah, brother. So he needs takeaway two. He needs it. Yeah. <laughs> he needs it. <laughs> I love Vince. Come on, takeaway two. All right. Well, maybe we should go through the phones, Michael. Yeah, what are we what doing? Are we well, got? the concept is if there's any first time listeners that have lasted this far into the app. N- the Nugget fans. The Nugget on. fans. Yeah. If you got some takeaway nug- Nuggy fans Nuggies. out there. Um, we swap phones. Spinning Wheel decides whether we go through draft tweets, notes, camera roll, or search history. Oh, Neil, you would have some tweets. You're still, but you deleted the app. I deleted my tweets. But no, I'm no. on Facebook. Well, but that's Facebook memories then. If like someone doesn't have Twitter or Instagram Explore page, but we did plenty of that on the last app. So we'll hand our phones to the right. So I'll spin the wheel first. See what Capra's going through in my phone. O'Neill, you can hang on to your phone for now. Um, and then if you're uncomfortable with any of those things, I see you furiously vetting some yeah, uh, yeah. content uh, over there. Uh, not at all. <laughs> I'm looking at a text. You're probably not Hold a, on to it for now. You're probably not a porn guy, are you? No, nah, I don't really like pornography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like, I don't know. I was working in a hot dog shop in the 80s, and I, this guy used to come in all the time, and he always used to try to give me VHS pornos, and he <laughs> sold it with, mate, this is a good one. There's heaps of sucking dick. I'm like... <laughs> I don't want to see that. Why is he going into a, a hot dog <laughs> shop to fucking push his There's dick sucking porno? I don't, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see a man's. I don't How old see... were you? Oh, I was being 20. How old uh, was he? Uh, he was being 30, had a beard, oh, divorced. Oh, God. And he also so gave me good. a record one day. I'm like, oh, there's something going on here. He's know. like, you know who's loving this dick sucking porno I have? Is this <laughs> fucking from the kid in the shop. hot dog stand. Nah, mate, it's really good. There's heaps of. I've never. I just, I just never like that. I never. Yeah. I don't want to see naked men. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. I like of, naked women. I oh, don't naked men. No, go naked. Well, the lesbian. What kind of crazy Not person? Lesbian. All their documentaries talks about their favorite sex scenes. They're like, oh man. Oh man, it's like me and Michael Link going. Oh yeah, this one's fucking good. Like, <laughs> oh, but you like, like people. That's your private thing. You know? I did, well, no, no. As yeah. maybe teenagers or something, but once yes. you get past yeah, that, yeah, 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 it's yeah. it's insane to yeah, be it's, like, it's toast. It's dude, so crazy, dude. Dude, you got to check this one. You Heaps of dog right out, Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing? Uh, uh, you can hold on to your phone for now, because right. uh, I'll go first. I'll spin the wheel. I'll hand my phone over to Cabber to see what he's going through. Ooh, got some volume on that. Um, did that tick over? That ticked over. That's search history. So have a go. Uh, now, Michael, you've been uh, in Perth. Yeah. Uh, last board. couple of weeks, spiraling. Spiraling. Uh, I wonder what we got here. Yeah, up and down. It was a roller coaster of shows, and yeah, I talked about a, a particularly rough one on the last episode. But it was a uh, a lot of show. They work you like more than any club in the country. You end up doing like eight gigs over two nights or whatever, and you're just like, all right. You're just like you get that. Um, you go stir crazy a little bit where you're doing callbacks to crowd work from a 
show two hours early. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's yeah. Are you yeah. on stage going? Have I done this before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love it. I love doing like three or four shows a night. It's so fun. Because oh, you're fun. not driving though. I'm not. Because so you're drinking the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I'm just drinking. The yeah. Whole time. So I'm like, I've, <laughs> I have one drink and then I'm just there for hours. I feel like I'm putting in a shift. Yeah. If yeah. you're in a building from like. 4.30 p.m. till 11 p.m. It feels like shift work. How many shows do you do in that time? Five. Five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But ones you got... How long are the spots? You got uh, 20-ish minutes. Yeah. Once I did like seven. Like yeah. In a, like in two nights, you know? Yeah. On the fr- fr- yeah. I did like three. The but first you go to another night. venue. Ones yeah. you drive out to Fremantle and do that. Freeho. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Epo, Freeho. Yeah. And then come back in. Says. It's great. Uh, now, Mike, you've got here, you searched for this word I've never seen before. Mutet. M O U. T-E-T. Uh, this is Olympic stuff. He's a uh, French tennis player that's like a real piece of shit. And he uh, was, uh, the crowd obviously was on his side. Being French. And they were yeah. bullying the little Indian guy he was playing tennis against. And like it, the, the guy had like double fault and the French yeah. crowd was going nuts. And Mute was, was amping him up. And it was just like the shittiest behavior. And I was like, I just looked him up to see what his stats were or something. So, yeah. yeah. You looked him up because you're like, I kind of like this rules. guy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, as if that wouldn't be a Mike G move. That would be such a Mike G move. I do love shitty personalities on a tennis court because it can be a boring sport. Someone was saying that tennis has got more and more boring because there's no personalities, or well, I mean, maybe they're on the outer courts. Kyrgios was kind of the last Kyrgios. to be, yeah. But yeah. then Djokovic is embracing his villain phase and like, yeah. like uh, mocking the crowd and. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. Is he the anti-vaxxer one? Is it? Djokovic? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. 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 no vax, Djokovic. No yes. Yeah. <laughs> you looked. Uh, you looked up here. Australian Federal Police. <laughs> Oh, be careful. No. Why was I looking up the police? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Just checking out the website? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, federal police. Why did I? Why would I look up the cops? You're in Perth. Yeah. 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 The federal police is different again. That's not state yeah. police. Yeah. I have actually no idea why I would have Googled that. Dude, this is great. Uh, this is really, really good. Yeah. It's... I love these just terrible tattoos. So someone's obviously got a tattoo of their daughter. Uh huh. And it's fucking uh, just horrific. Full cool. So we just show it. To yeah, me. that's <laughs> just like so oh. funny. Imagine, <laughs> imagine being in that guy's family or being one of his mates, but you got to tell him that's good. Like, oh, yeah. dude, that looks oh, great. beautiful. Is she, is she just like her? So good. Is she dead? That's often the problem with those tattoos yeah. and people's names. <laughs> you go. Is that person dead? Yeah. yeah. I made that mistake before saying, "Why have you got Kylie on your arm? She died." Oh, oh god! I don't ask yeah. anymore. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it could really derail a show. History I got Sorry, smart. Man. Yeah, yeah, man, um, that's so that's so funny. I love those. Uh, yeah, the hideous children ones where oh. they just like their eyes all fucked up or whatever. It is. Yeah, so, I love the football man. ones like Premiership. You know, and you're like, you're not going to win the Premiership. Oh, uh, the, t- the typo ones are great. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. No regrets. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that was just because I'd pinned her on the last episode, and I was going to yeah. get him to post because he's a tattoo artist. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. I've and never I, met him, but he seems like a funny guy. Great dude, know. great act. Yeah. yeah, you just uh, want people to get out of Perth more, you know? Yeah. Does he ever come out to Melbourne or Sydney? Or? He just did the lounge here in Melbourne a few oh, weeks wow. ago. And oh, like good. Crushed he, every night. He's so good. Um, you got this one. Uh, oh, this will be the last one. You got. Uh, I think you were writing a joke here. Yeah. Search for who has two thumbs and arthritis joke. Yeah. Yeah. I wa- <laughs> yeah. Because it's, uh, all right, I'll do it for you guys. Uh, who has two thumbs and severe arthritis? I don't know. This guy. <laughs> oh, Neil likes it. Not bad. Yeah. That visual yeah. joke. That visual jokes are good. Yeah. yeah. I don't people know, at home, podcast. he held up his th- hands. Yeah, for the podcast. Thumbs Listeners, you gotta get Can you on make the your YouTube. thumbs look even more crippled, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I tried. I think I tried it and opened my. And I'd already made fun of like there was a like a, a sixty-eight-year-old guy in the room, and I was like giving him shit. Um, and then I tried that joke. I go, "What has two thumbs and severe arthritis?" And someone goes, "Gary." <laughs> and then that like killed way and then I still tried that and people were like oh nah, no nah, Gary, Gary, yeah, Gary, Gary, was yeah, Gary was good <laughs> Gary that's the funny yeah, one yeah yeah oh man so I just like I was like surely this has been done nah but it nah. hasn't been done nah yeah yeah nope. 
Yeah. I reckon. I don't reckon. No. All right. Oh, so what what's jokes. What's I don't your... know if it'd work on stage though. I think it's too stupid to work yeah, on stage. Yeah. I reckon it's give it a go. I reckon it's oh. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I'd give it a go. So get on the YouTube if you want to see the great yeah, had anyone visual done act anything out. like that before. Yeah, there was a meme of uh someone said what has two thumbs and doesn't understand joke structure or this guy. Uh, you know, so, okay. Yeah, that's no yeah, good. It's too in in baseball. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, pointing yeah, with the yeah, index yeah, fingers. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I just figure uh, severe arthritis. But then someone did an arthritis joke and posted a clip and like got trolled mercilessly by, by the arthritis the, people. Yeah. 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 How are they about. even typing? <laughs> and why are they getting a fed? I think so a good stupid. visual thing is good. If you yeah, come yeah, a good visual, visual thing is good. Yeah. So I no, it. I couldn't find that that joke had been done before. So that's a, a Mike G original classic. Oh dude. mate, that's good. Yeah, that's good. It's good when you don't find it. Yeah. Like, hell yeah. I don't even bother looking. To be no. I, I feel yeah. like if it's a play on words or if it seems like it might be something that would have been done before. Sometimes you have an inkling in the back of your head you've heard it before. That I do look sometimes then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. I'm writing gags for this something and like I was like saying someone's royalty and you go, yeah, this person's like our showbiz royalty, uh, specifically Prince Andrew, yeah. right? I was like, surely that gag's been done, yeah. you know? But then I... I don't reckon it has. Yeah. yeah. I reckon it has. Yeah. It's, like, eh. it's a good joke. Yeah. It's not bad. It's probably been done, you know, not as a joke. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, like, like in Buckingham Palace, they've gone, oh, yeah, there he is, Prince Andrew. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? Um, all right, should I spin the wheel to uh, see what we're going through in yours, Capper? Uh, it is... It is... Notes. Notes. No, so, do, you, oh, yeah, do you want me to do this? I've done a couple of notes. Hand I cappers. think I know how to work notes. I've got notes on my phone. Yeah. But uh, have you... I love notes. Have you seen Capper's notes? This is going to... Oh, you'll really... be forever changed. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, is it like... I'm just going to... I think the first note there is like motorbike rides and then there's it's like... like the what if a Maroon pigeon. the Highway, Lillardale to Mary River. Black Spur. Black yes, Spur. that's a famous motorbike ride. Even yeah, I know right. that. Yeah, i got to go there. The Black Spur is amazing. I got cancer three years ago and in spite of how humanity triumphed overall, the door cracked. Oh, uh, yeah. That's about <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> the door crack. Humanity, the, door crack. the title of that one is. I've been, uh, I've been listening to um, David Byrne's book from the Talking Heads. Yeah, I love David Byrne. And uh, he was like talking about how he read some book about when humanity is in, like, when there's problems. Yeah. Race, everything, class, all don't matter. Everyone just helps each other. Mm. But it only lasts for like three days. Yeah. Like when September 11th happened, whatever, they had the restaurants open for free. Oh, everyone was nice. No one cared yeah, about each yeah. other and everyone's nice for like a week. The first couple of weeks of COVID. Yeah, exactly. Remember? Yeah, then everyone yeah. turns on everyone. Yeah. And then uh, I've, I got that when, you know, if someone was a dick to me or whatever, or it, if someone was an asshole or, or whatever, but when I got cancer, everyone was so nice to me. And I re really got to see, and I've, and I've been trying to link that to the bloke because like when I saw the Trump guy, when I saw Trump got shot, you think before that you think, oh look at all these fucking inbred racist idiots. Yeah. But then the moment the like the fireman guy got in front of the his kids, you're like, oh well he's just he's just human like everybody else. Yeah. He's just a good human. And I was trying to write that like you, I don't know if you'd see that at a Greens rally. Like if a Greens leader in Australia got shot, yeah, it'd be just be keep cups and Birkenstocks thrown in the air. Yeah, you know what I mean. It'd just be like, it'd That's be a like, good angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah something like but that, also, it know? wouldn't be a gun. It'd be a crossbow or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then again, it'd probably be a right winger <laughs> yeah. shooting him. Yeah. yeah, I was like thinking, oh, there'd be Birkenstocks and keep cups all over the ground. You'd just hear the sound of tote bags. Of uh, yeah, of, yeah, tote bags is pretty good. Yeah, man. You just hear the sounds of Priuses screeching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I was trying to say is like, you know, you that's don't judge right. it. Everyone's, everyone's, everyone's human. But also like Trump, you know, that, that guy immediately got shot by a sharpshooter. Yeah. Who would the Greens have fucking protect you? Yeah, true. Some hippie with a crystal. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. come on, man. <laughs> Get off the roof. A dream catcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a dream yeah. catcher. He's, I think he's on the roof, man. And like, that's the worst thing. Like, I'm Greens and I'm like... Yeah, I don't know if I'd jump in front of my wife. I'd probably push her in front of me, you know? Well, that's... <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I definitely push Mike in front of me. <laughs> oh, I definitely push your wife. In front you'd of hope you. that you'd save your wife and children, but you don't know what happens. Happens. Yeah. Um. Okay. Oh God. No. But, but Wagga Wagga Burke Street School Zone. It took so long. I actually went. Uh, what? That's what it says. Burke Street School Zone. It took so long. I actually went. Time oh, message. I went to Wagga. And you know you try and write pers- you write jokes about the place. Yeah, absolutely. There was this um, school zone mm. that Brett and I were riding our motorbikes through that went for like I reckon five k's at least. Oh, I hate that. It was like it was three school zones in a row. Right. Anyway, I did that at the gig and it crushed. Really? It was like oh, oh they love a bit of road talk. What about all the school zones on Burke Street? I was like, by the time I got there, I'd almost went back to school again. Oh, that's <laughs> like, oh, he knows the fucking roads. Right, oh, right, not right. not even that clever. Well, God, I don't. I yeah. How did you go in Woolgulgula? Woolgulga? Woolgulga? Oh, Woolgulga. Aurora turn off Dorigo. Oh, Mountain that's Scotch that's more guy. motorbike rides. Yeah. Oh, there. Okay, yeah, Dorigo. Yeah, I've been yeah. to Dorigo. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, what else? We got a lot of invoices. A lot of Jetstar. Yeah, <laughs> invoices. Yeah, <laughs> I've flown Jetstar a couple it, of times lately. It are sucks. you on a Greyhound bus? Yeah, line? I met a uh, flight attendant uh, after a gig, and um, I was told that when Jetstar cancels and they mm. got to put everyone on the Qantas flight, yeah. they call that code orange, yeah. and because they all freak out because the the absolute scum from Jetstar is invading <laughs> their Qantas flight, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we got a code orange, code yeah, orange, code orange, and, and then fuck. you just get all this fucking just. Well, speaking of Jester, you've got several Greyhound e-tickets here. Oh, yeah, I hopped on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> <laughs> I, hopped on a... I don't even know Greyhound buses existed yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah. This year I've hopped on two Greyhound buses. I got one from Canberra to Sydney, oh, which is pretty oh, that's funny. only two or three hours. I yeah, mean. yeah, and then I got one from Harvey Bay to Brisbane, which was six or seven hours. Ugh. Oh, fuck. But, you know, I tell you... Jetstar is the greyhound of the sky, really. Oh, it, is. Yeah, it oh, is. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. Yeah, seriously. Well, I'm older than you guys. We used to catch buses to Sydney all the time to see bands and that in the 80s. It was like 60 bucks return, and you'd do it overnight. The Firefly, it was called. Yeah. We yeah. couldn't afford planes, but now they just, everyone just goes Jetstar. Yeah, 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 whatever. man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, um, you know, you just meet this guy. You've, you've probably met this guy a million times. Sometimes you're on a bus or a situation in a street or something where there's a guy that's like a big guy. He's got like a shaved head and huge dinner plate eyes and he just stares. At, oh, yeah. And you're like, this guy could crack at any minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's just always staring around. There was one of those guys on the Greyhound bus and I'm like, this guy's going to this guy's gonna crack. Yeah. So, right, you know, he's walking past him and he's like, oh. Do you have a bus driver that gave a bit of commentary? <laughs> was there a bus driver giving a bit of commentary on the microphone? Uh, no, it's not like the old days oh, anymore, I man. They play, they play a recording thing. I remember one time I, because uh, at boarding school we used to take a lot of buses, and um, I said, um, hey, uh, bus driver, thanks for driving us. And he goes, it's Coach Captain. Right? <laughs> Coach I love Captain. that. Because they used to title. always pull their socks up. Oh, yeah, they, they had shorts and wear socks. A hat. Yeah, they wore a hat. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, wore a hat. It's Coach Captain. Wow. And my dad's like, he's never mean about anyone or anything. <laughs> and we got in the car and dad's like, Coach Captain, what a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he hated the title. Hated Too much the, authority, dude. Coach well, Captain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buses were. Bus drivers uh, are frontline workers, though, because if you think about it, oh, the man, train it. conductors are you never see, right? Yeah, like yeah. They're, no, they're, in a, they're in a room. The in a room. tram drivers have like their own little cage or whatever, but bus drivers are fucking in the mix. They're yeah. out there just getting abused yeah. oh. every day. Let them have Coach Captain, I reckon. Oh, yeah, let them have Coach Captain, yeah. They always had their socks pulled up, though, which was crazy. Oh, they yeah, had white socks pulled up. Shorts, like, yeah, shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They're called Ray, too. Ray or, you Yeah, know, it was Wally. always Ray, yeah, Coach Captain. I remember years ago we um, we went on this excursion when we were uh, in, in school, and uh, the, the, the Coach Captain was like, would tell us all dirty stories and stuff. He's like, <laughs> yeah, once I had a delivery job, right? And uh, anyway, I dropped off this food to this lady. She's like, you want to fuck? And then I fucked her. And we were like, whoa, dude, a chick's like that? They so just open up the door and they're like, you want to fuck? This is the bus driver the told bus this? driver, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like the bullshit, bus driver yeah. and Billy Madison. Like, oh, Veronica man, was... Vaughn is one fine piece of ace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us a bunch of uh, golf clubs so you could hit cane toads in uh, Queensland. There was always that one filthy guy, wasn't there, in workplaces. When yeah, I went to the yeah. supermarket, the bread delivery guy was filthy. Really? Yeah, really. Oh, just f- the filth <laughs> would come out of his... 
I, I worked in this. Um, I worked for the Red Cross for a long, oh, a few years when my brother still. All works. right, mate. Okay. Whatever. I was just so I got a job at a uni, at a teachers college there. It's like a white collar guy. Was this yeah. the hot dog job? No, this <laughs> is hot dog. This to is the, the Red Cross, and <laughs> I was like a. And anyway, there were these mechanics, right? And they were, yeah. so it was really interesting. There were real blue collar guys. The state, the storemen, the mechanics, yeah. the cleaners, whatever. Then the white collar who were mainly uni graduates. But I, I, and I quit my job, whatever, and I went back there because so I started doing comedy. And I went back there and worked with the mechanics and the storeroom guys. Yeah. So you saw it from their side, but the mechanics were like the most. They were old guys, about sixty. They were the politest. When I was in the white collar job, yeah, there was so a lot of women worked in this organization. They were so polite to the women. And so lovely, and you know, oh, they're called like John and Jeff or something. John and Jeff, they're so yeah. nice. But once you work with them, so they, a lady would come and pick up a car that they just cleaned, and then John would just turned to Jeff, you'd fuck her, wouldn't you, mate? You'd <laughs> root her. <laughs> oh, absolutely, Jeff. Oh, it, was, it was so graphic. I was like 22. I'm like, oh, these guys, I thought these guys were nice guys, but they're so, once the people out of earshot, oh, of course. they're graphic. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh man. We, we, uh, filth. <laughs> but the bread guy in the supermarket was the worst. Really? Yeah, right. Like he would deliver the bread and go, I'm going to go and have a look at the girls. And, go, like, and then he'd go, gee, I'll tell you what, Sandra's, Sandra's a bit of all right. She's a bit of all right. You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, you give her a go. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. bread delivery yeah. guy. And then they wouldn't never, yeah, have the courage to actually fuck no. with this lady. Or, no, know. he would have been married with yeah. kids. This bloke, the funniest sure. thing ever happened to buckle me when we did this gig in Glenray. You know, they were all these, they all knew each other. And uh, Brett was talking about sex toys on stage, and they were like, they just pointed, one lady pointed to another, and he goes, She's got one. Oh she calls God. it Wendell. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, she, Wendell. She carries Wendell around all the time, what? right? She carries a dildo around. This with big her. purple dildo, right? But they must have just, she must have had it for a bit, and then she's like, Well, I'm going to show. I'm going to take it to the pub and it's going to be funny. Yeah. Right? Oh, they were all right. just partying at each other's houses. Yeah. And then all they did after the show, like, because my parents came and watched, they just happened to be passing through. And it was funny at first, but then all they did was just keep talking about Wendell. Like, Wendell. Wendell. Love they it. banned Wendell from the pub, right? <laughs> so they just, we, one time we were swinging around and, yeah. and Wendell went through a window and, and the barman's like, that's it. No more Wendell, uh. right? And then my dad's like, my dad, when she walked away, he goes, I can't believe Wendell Saylor lives down the road. And mum's like, what? No, not Wendell Saylor. Wendell. It's a famous dildo. Rugby, was talking famous about rugby player. Dad, was, <laughs> dad thought they'd banned Wendell Saylor from the pub. <laughs> Man, I interviewed Wendell Saylor on, on TV once. and yeah. I, He's a big rugby player. Yeah. I said, how much do you weigh? And he goes, I'm 120 kilos. And I said, Wow. Eight more kilos, and I'm an elite athlete. That's good to know. <laughs> Here we go. um, one more note, and then we'll. Yeah. Do My it. brother Jack, is that the book or? Yeah, yeah, it's a great uh, book. Rowan Arneal, uh, he's a I my, don't know my cousin. He yeah. reads a lot of uh, books. He's a comic from Sydney. Okay, and uh, he, I said to him, "Oh, mate, do you have any literary pieces?" That's a great book, my brother Jack. We did yeah. that at school. That's yeah. an Australian book about the. Guy comes back from the war or something. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You'd love it. It's good. Apparently, it's is really it good. Tim Winton? No, it's no. before Tim Winton's time. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Are oh, you being a WA person would know Tim? Oh, Winton. that's that's the only Cloud like, Street. That's the only author I could pull. Have you read Australian Cloud Street author. or? Yeah, Cloud Street, and then there was some other one about fucking oh, kids in Perth or fucking kids in Perth. Yeah, fucking what? kids in Perth. Yeah. Oh, you've got to. You know what you got to <laughs> read is is the Shark Net. Have you read the Shark Net? No. Set in Perth? No. Oh, fantastic. It's about that, that serial killer dirt, that was going around. Dirt music? Is that another one of his? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, Sharknet's not Tim Winton. That's yeah. another Perth writer. Yeah. 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 It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. great, mate. Yeah, the um, uh, there was a – when you get back on Twitter, there's a great Twitter account. It was like Tim Winton. Yeah. Someone had written things in the spirit of Tim Winton. <laughs> oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He walked down <laughs> to the beach. He was carrying a harpoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was just like full. Well, he loves yeah. the beach, Tim. He loves yeah. surf. He, oh, loves, yeah. he loves the beach, man. Oh, yeah, he man. loves the beach. Yeah. Um, all right, quickly, Dave's. Would well, you love to be like on a beach and he doesn't know anyone's around? He's got a can of Coke and just chucks it on the ground yeah. with a cigarette. And you're like, I saw Tim Winton littering the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or stabbing a dolphin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right, quickly, Dave. Yeah, come phone. on. Camera roll. Oh, God. Yeah, sure. 
Is there any, anything good in there? Oh, there probably would be. I don't know. You have a look. See what's yeah. Do you still send dick pics on tour? <laughs> Death? Yeah. You're still getting the Just whole Just go out. through it. I don't know. Some of these are my wife. He so. sends dick pics of the old mate from the hot dog stand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. Hey, you think this would make it in? <laughs> you can have a look. I don't know. There's just whatever in there. There's just 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 go through it. I don't know. There's oh, there. There's who's that guy? The ball. Guy. That's Robert Grave. I, went, I was in Scouts with him. I did a gig for him on Saturday night. Right. Um, just a not a lot. A picture of a. There's a lot of cats. Oh, QV. Yeah, just I a love QV. Big picture of a. Yeah, it's my wife. Get that from the chemist for me. Oh, uh, so you yeah. sent it to her to I be like, pick this QV. up. Are you sure with QV? It's so good. Yeah, it's really good, man. Oh, I'm really down. I'm, really, I'm always really against QV. Maybe we should embrace QV cream. In, 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 yeah, I was out of shaving cream once and I used it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, my wife so always fresh. talks about how good it is. I'm gonna have to tell her that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Tell her. Because she really hates my shaving cream at the moment. I got it one time, man. I got to meet your wife. I've never met her, and uh, you got to show me her illustrations. Oh, okay. I didn't know she was an illustrator. Yeah, she used to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she wants to. Get back I would love it. to see that. We did a book together. Yeah. Uh, we had a few books together, actually, yeah, kids' books. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It's pretty boring stuff in there. I'd no, say. no, no. Like you've taken a picture of a like it looks like a an interview uh, in print that says, "What's your fragrance of choice?" And then someone says, "La Labo Vitivier Forty Six. Now that would be my wife. Oh. My photos are shared with her. Oh, oh right. Um, no interest in fragrances. Uh, you, got, yeah. you, you can <laughs> I was share like, photos. This is why would you have? Yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. Maybe you should get back on some, Twitter. You're losing your mind. There's some <laughs> reason why my phone is I don't know why the other thing is what happens that she's got a computer at home and if you text me my text messages just come up on her computer <laughs> which has been problematic oh. when Husey oh yeah texts me like what are you doing tonight I'm doing a gig for kinder mums uh -huh. oh yeah any hot mums oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind oh, of stuff and you're like ah oh. yeah Husey's that guy that's like I give her a go why are you, <laughs> why, are you why is Husey texting you any hot mums I'm like oh, no. and you text back because like, she doesn't she only sees the incoming ones she doesn't see the outgoing ones yeah, yeah. she's yeah. seeing random shit coming in oh, that's from comedians so funny. <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> Any hot mums? Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> There's a picture of like arc pants, pig, pink, like big billowy. Again, they're my wife. <laughs> Why is it all in that, your yeah, shit? Yeah, do yeah, with yeah. that? Butter chicken rice pie. Again, not mine. <laughs> Why is it all in Sorry. your camera? It's so hard not to, because uh, back, back. I'm gonna sound like an old guy here. So back in our day. You would have the shops would be open from nine to five. That's right, and Saturday uh, nine to twelve. Saturday nine to twelve. So only had a small window, and if nothing was to your liking, you just wouldn't buy it. Yeah, that's right. But now you just got a shop constantly bugging you. Oh man, it's I'm got the pleading. Internet. I'm pleading my wife, like, please, just don't buy anything this week. Oh, like, I, don't and, worry, I do the same. Don't and, worry about that. And I'm the same as well. I'm like, I, I, I see stuff, and it's always hitting me, and I'm like. No, I don't buy anything. I, I always try and get her approval. I'm like, should I buy this? She's like, no, we can't buy stuff for a week. Yeah, Because it just keeps coming at you. Yeah. Well, once looks... you have kids too, th th then there's the excuse on buying it for the children. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, why do we need like a retro fucking game, you know, yeah. Monopoly? Oh, it's for the kids. Yes. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why do we need Cluedo? Why do we need Kaplan? We don't need these things. <laughs> um, Sorry. That's probably... What's your favourite one? Would you say board game? Oh, uh, you know what? We actually, when we go to the the beach and that the beach house, I've just started playing cards with the kids. Oh yeah, and just I mean, you know, it's good. You know, it's a great game. But I just teach them. We play. They want to learn all the because they hear about poker and pontoon and that. Oh, so I yeah. teach them that. But cheats a really good game. Cheats great. Yeah, I love cheat. We, cheats uh, great. I um, my wife's family they played this one called May I, and that was pretty good. But oh, then I I put them I. onto asshole, and they love asshole. Oh, what's Arsehole's, asshole? Asshole's awesome. It's where two is your highest card. Arsehole, I'll speak on my photos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a ton of screenshots of like Instagram posts, but I can't imagine you're doing that. No, so, that wouldn't be me. Yeah, like lyrics for the star sign cancer. And then it's <laughs> no, like, that's not me. Nobody could drag me down. I'm laughing on the outside, crying no, on the inside. No. So, there's a lot of inspiration. Like a new age stuff. book. Is my your, phone. Yeah. Is your partner, is she a star sign person? Uh, no, a little bit. Not really. Because my wife's like really logical. She doesn't do any of that. So but she, then one of her friends is... Meg from New Idea. <laughs> yeah. Remember Meg from New Idea? This is you. This is a picture of the uh, yeah, well, the crisps section at the supermarket. So yes. you've taken of the Boulder Canyon. You've taken uh, a photo of all uh, the 
the Boulder Canyon option. Yeah, or someone send that to me. Yeah, any photos of Lolly? Often when I go to a hotel, I take a photo of the mini bar and I send it to Kitty Flanagan, right? Who yes. I do a podcast with about junk food. Yeah, called the Junkies, and I just say, "How shit is this?" And right? She's like Boulder Canyon, so, good chip. Boulder, Boulder Canyon are very good. Yeah, and also. She'll never get it back to my normal text, but anything involving Lolly, she'll get back to me. Right. Because you also have twisties for dogs called Twist Dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's crazy. That's good. I know. The, um, Kitty Flanagan, does she have a good metabolism? Does she eat a oh, lot of junk? Unbelievable. Really? She's so petite. Yeah, she looks so fit. Like, I look like someone who eats junk food, but she... <laughs> She's like a vegan, but she loves lollies and chips and stuff. Right. Oh, so she doesn't right. eat meat, but she'll. So I also love hamburgers, you know, hamburgers, yeah, 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 sausage yeah. rolls, you know, yeah, yeah, pies, dim sims, yeah, spring rolls. She doesn't eat any of that, but she loves any of that petrol station sort of chips, lollies, ice creams, yeah, big yeah. ice cream fiend, eh, all that stuff like clinkers, jubes, and she knows her. I've never met anyone that knows more about lollies than me. And that really? She knows, oh, yeah, she is. There's a few in comedy. There's a few uh, uh, Cull Chandler's uh, Snack Fiend. Yes, yes. Um, th- he got me onto the uh, Woolworths cookies. Oh, they're great. They're so good. Oh, man, they're the uh, best. I've, I've, yeah, no. Yeah, when yeah. I tour the regions, I often go to the Woolies and get it. A- One time I um, put ice cream with them. It was crazy. Oh. It was it was insane. It was yeah. stupid. 12. Ridiculous. Um, I think I don't know. There's a lot of political stuff. There's Peter Dutton and the Seven Reactors. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, yeah, we, it's like, we have a family chat with me, my partner, and the three kids. Yeah, and we and we send memes to everyone. And so yeah, when we yeah, find yeah. Peter Dutton ones, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. That's um, Peter Dutton as Montgomery Burns. Montgomery Burns. Ah, uh, yes, perfect, perfect. Where do you announce? The Peter Dutton, and I'm trying to come up with a Peter Dutton nuclear joke. You're, yeah. you, you guys are joke experts. Yeah. Like, gee, you're writing for yeah. some of the big guns. Yeah. Um, I had lunch with a big gun, and he said you're writing for him. I am. Yeah, one of the big, one of the big ones. Yeah. Uh, so was he happy with my writing? John Cleese. I just said he said he's got you and Carl Chandler. I said, well, they're the best joke guys in Melbourne. Oh, so. that means yeah, a lot, man. Yeah. Then he said a few other people. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, you look at some like writing rooms and you're like, that person? Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got diversity stuff these days too, which comes into play in, in some writing rooms. Yeah, that's why I get the gigs because of the Sri Lankan Jew, dude. Yeah, except you don't look like it. But <laughs> yeah, you've yeah. got to wear that on a T-shirt. I'm kidding. I don't get that gig for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of food shots, just like a roast. Oh, yeah, something. that's yeah, yeah. I would have taken that. I would have cooked that. Yeah. I would have cooked that. Does that look good? That looks great. Yeah. Wow, that's like, uh, what'd you do? Steam some chicken there or something? Or is it, it right? Look, it might be from the chicken. That looks juicy as hell. That, I reckon that's when I was interstate doing a gig and they bought chicken from the chicken shop. I right. Oh, sorry, right. Chicken, shop, chicken, chicken chop chicken. Man, I'm trying to, trying to come up with a Peter Dutton joke. And the only thing I've come up with see if, um, yeah. is he's really pushing this nuclear thing because he looks like he's already been, he's wandered out of Hiroshima. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's pretty good. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. What if saying Hiroshima is too harsh? Uh, I think it's been, it's been a while, time. isn't it? Yeah. I'll say Nagasaki instead. Nagasaki sounds fact. funnier than Hirosh- Hiroshima. Yeah, Nagasaki has got yeah, a yeah, funnier. Hard, yeah, yeah, Nagasaki. But the people, or Chernobyl, it looks like he's wandered out of Chernobyl. Chernobyl's better. Chernobyl's be- funnier. Yeah, yeah, Chernobyl's yes. funnier, yeah. Because it wasn't mass devastation. There was, but you oh. know what I mean? Not on a level of Nagasaki, Hiroshima. Oh, yeah, I read yeah. a great fact. A guy experienced Hiroshima, gone on a train to Nagasaki, and then experienced Nagasaki the next day or whatever it happened. Yeah. <laughs> he survived both bombings. <laughs> really? Yes. So what? Co- there was one guy dude. who survived both bombings. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. All right. Yeah. I think that's it. I mean, because I could see there's just a ton Sorry, of... it's really boring. No, no, no that's great, mate. Yeah. It's really, I wish I could find something funny on there for you. Yeah. No. Yeah, there's photos of Brad Oaks eating a pizza. Oh, um, wow. I did a gig with Oaksy. There we go. Famous. I don't know, have I told it on here where he was... He, was trying to introduce me, but he was choking on a corn chip. Oh, yeah. That was so funny. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. There's photos of my daughter's 18th, my son's 21st. They're all pretty boring. Most yeah, people are yeah. getting CC'd in an email. He's getting CC'd in real life. <laughs> That's a good joke. That's not bad. That's not bad at yeah, all. One of the kings. Um, oh. All right. Well, I think that's it. Yeah, that's we don't it, have man. Any yeah, yeah. Plan. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, now, Dave. I've got a special on uh, my first ever special on YouTube. Yes, it's going great. Is it? 
Yeah, no, I saw it's got it. a few views. You, you filmed this re- in Newcastle in like two months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We so, Capper and I filmed this special a year ago, and there's nothing happening. Yeah, right mine's now. just finished. Well, I just almost finished. got I almost got pulled into that web, and then I went to Newcastle. And I saw what they were doing. They got a schmick set up. Oh, yeah. so good. And it's really cheap. And so I just went, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. filmed like a mini one in Newcastle and it was great. It oh, was because so fun. when I started, um, specials weren't a thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They were not. Everyone's got a special now. Yeah, yeah but so when I started in the 90s, anything. no one did. You <laughs> yeah, know, you'd yeah. maybe see Eddie Murphy do one, you know, yeah, and it'd yeah, be in the yeah. cinemas. But yeah. And then, yeah, it's interesting because we would just get on TV and do four minutes and then you'd hope that. It would build to something or, you know, whatever, yeah. a panel show. But now, yeah, specials are important. So apparently. YouTube, what's the name of the special? Good Ones. It's called Good Ones. Good Ones. Good, good, good Ones. One. Dave, good good one. One. Dave O'Neill, one of the best. Check out Good One on Oh, it's YouTube. not that good. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right one. I didn't have a killer night. It was all right. You know what I mean? But I go, yeah. well, why? Just put it out. You still want people to watch this. To be bro. honest, I didn't even watch the whole thing through myself. <laughs> oh, they're hard to watch, dude. <laughs> Uh, Fucking watching an edit so brutal. is brutal. Oh, I hear these American comedy guys, yeah, I spent four days in the edit. I'm like, why? Jesus. Yeah. Who cares? Let someone else put it together. Put it then, out. Yeah, 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 who cares? We know the jokes work. Just put it out. Yeah. There was uh, one time when I looked at my watch and said, how long has this been going for? Yeah. So they did cut that out, which was good. <laughs> <laughs> Happy about that. Uh, I don't really have anything to plug besides the Patreon. Get over to that. Heaps of uh, content going up as well as videos of the episodes. Uh, uh, solo show eventually on the Gold Coast in October. So, yeah, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Nighty and I are filming another special at uh, Bod Riggy on the 15th of September. Wow. So I'll put up put up the ticket link for that soon. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. it. See you guys. Bye. 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 See ya.